Over two years ago, I made a Reddit post on the CSGO subreddit about the map sizes in hammer units, inspired by this video from Uncle Den. I actually made the post just one day after the video was posted, and at the time, I was sure I'd messed something up somewhere, but the relative comparisons were still useful, relevant, and interesting to see. Since then, the maps have changed, and I didn't test every map in the game. I also wanted to check, double check, and refine the testing method to see if the way that I initially calculated the values was flawed. Spoiler alert, yes it was. I cannot, for the life of me, figure out how Uncle Den got the numbers he got in his video. It doesn't help that there's very little information provided about how he actually calculated it, save for this translucent guide that doesn't give the same numbers. Trust me, I tried. The steps in this image go as follows. Load the map you want to test. Use the command nav flood select. Use the command nav chop select. Wait for the game to process the nav mesh. At this point, you're left with the number of sections, which are all equally sized squares. According to the steps, these are probably 24 by 24 hammer units, which means it should be as simple as 24 by 24, which is 576, multiplied by the amount of squares, then divided by a million, which is 1000 times 1000. Right? Well, I tried this and absolutely could not recreate any of the numbers Uncle Dane got. As cool as it would be to give the playable area estimate and kill a hammer unit squared like he did, I just cannot figure out how to do it. This is due to his method involving a plugin which did the calculation, and I can't figure out if the plugin is calculating it incorrectly, or if it's calculating it correctly, but I'm just doing something wrong. It also doesn't help that there's this Reddit post made a year ago which says you multiply the amount of squares by 625, which is 25 squared, not 24. Either way, it doesn't give me the same numbers as Uncle Den. There are a lot of conflicting calculations here, so I'm just not going to bother with it and I'll instead focus on the amount of squares, not calculating the area of the squares. The amount of squares still gives us a relative size comparison between each map, and if anyone wants to try and bite the bullet and convert these numbers into kilohammer units squared, be my guest, but I am not attempting this myself. Since a few people have done posts and videos about this before me, I wanted to do something that made my analysis meaningful so that it doesn't blend in with the rest. So, I decided to do something that I don't think anyone has done before, which is to calculate the size of the wingman maps. This isn't as easy as you think it is, because the wingman maps are just the competitive maps with barriers. This means flood select will still select the entire nav mesh, not just the wingman section. To get this data, I had to do things the good old fashioned way, running around and selecting everything manually. This was exactly as tedious as it sounds, but I did get the data. With all of that out the way, here's the part you're actually interested in. How do the maps compare to each other in terms of playable space? In order to best show this, I'm going to be grouping the maps arbitrarily by game mode. So let's start with the competitive maps. The smallest competitive map, surprise to nobody, is Vertigo. It feels like one of the smallest maps in the game, and it is. The second smallest map is... Train? Okay, I'm not 100% convinced that this is accurate. You see, the flood select method is good, but there are some parts of the nav meshes for maps that are incomplete or missing. In this case, the top of the trains are missing. I'm not sure how much extra space this would add if the trains were included, but... I just don't have a feeling that it's enough to make it larger than the next map. I think the reason that train feels so large is just because of how long most of the map is. T-spot onto IV is a long path, but it's a narrow one. Same goes for T-spot onto B. It's a long map, but just an... it's just not very wide. Inferno comes in as the next map. Again, it's a pretty long map, but it just doesn't have that much space to move around. At almost the exact same size as Inferno is Mirage. <laughs> yep, I never considered these two to be the same size, but it sort of makes sense when you think about it. After those, we have Cobble. Cobble used to be the second biggest map in the game when I made that initial post, but after the Halloween rework, it has been downgraded to middle of the pack. Then, Anubis. Yep, Anubis is bigger than the rework Cobble. I only played Anubis once and that was back when it was in scrimmage, but it honestly felt a lot bigger to me than it apparently is. I guess that's just because of how complex the map looks more than anything. Anyway, next up we have another two maps that are almost the same. Dust 2 and 
Overpass. Yep, Overpass. Overpass feels like a huge map, but it's barely bigger than the staple map of the entire series. I think this comes down to how complex the map seems, but in reality the playable area isn't that large compared to the map itself. Then, at second biggest, we have the one you probably expected, Niug. This map has so much empty space, so many large areas, it even has these wasted areas behind the spawn where the spawns used to be. Nuke has everything it needs to be a large map, but if Nuke isn't the largest map, then that leaves Cash. Cash has a large empty spaces, large spawn areas, a large mid, a large bomb sites, large entrances to bomb sites. Cash is just a large map. So now we've gone through all the maps in competitive, I want to quickly touch on Wingman maps. Here's a graph, but the thing I find most interesting is how these maps compare to their competitive counterparts. Wingman Tren is just over 70% of the full map. The only part you can't go to is Bombsite B, making it the largest. Vertigo is probably going to come back to bite me later because Valve sometimes changed the Bombsite, but in its current layout, Bombsite B, about 69% of the map is accessible. Nice. On the other end of the spectrum, Short Nuke is just 24% of the full map. It's honestly a little bit crazy to think that Bombsite B is just under a quarter of Nuke and the rest of the map is 75%. Moving on to the more maps that you'll only play in Casual or Deathmatch, Italy is the smallest. This surprised me a little bit because Italy feels like a huge map, but it has the same thing going on as Train, where it's just a lot of long passageways without that much width. Next is Canals, which... Wait, Canals is still in the game? Then we have Mutiny and... I know Mutiny is in Scrimmage, but Scrimmage isn't ranked, so I included it here. In the middle of the group we have Office and Agency, very similar sizes. Again, I know these are in competitive, but nobody takes the hostage game mode seriously, so I didn't include them. Anyway, I think it's interesting that the two hostage maps that are in competitive are both almost identical in size. If you want to make a good hostage map, aim for these sizes, I guess. Jumping up by a lot. Militia is way larger than any of the previous maps, and is closely followed by Swamp. Finally, Assault is the largest casual map. We're almost done, but first we have to get through the maps exclusive to Wargames. Here's the graph, I'll speed through these. Shoutdust is the smallest map, and yes, I know it's a annoying man. Lunacy is the next smallest, almost tied with Baggage. If you want a fast-paced map, pick these. Next is Dizzy, not much bigger than Baggage, and then we jump up a lot for St. Mark. After this, it's close between Shoots and Monastery. Fun fact about Monastery, by the way, I noticed there's this huge jump section of the nav mesh that theoretically allows bots to jump from this tower to the centre building. I made a bot try the jump, and... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jumping up again, Sugarcane is the third biggest, immediately dwarfed by Safe House, which is immediately dwarfed again by Bank. And that's the whole map list compared. I wouldn't have expected... You know, there's another map, right? There's another map? Yeah, in Wingman and Wargames. There is? Oh yeah, Leg. I'm sure Leg won't change my results too much. Fucking yikes. Yeah, so Lake absolutely destroys every other map in the game. Lake is basically just a huge box that you can run anywhere in, so it makes sense, but this is not what I was expecting. The reason I left Lake until last isn't just because it makes for a fun way to end the video, even though it does, it's actually because it ruins the graphs. Seriously, look at this. If I included Lake in the graphs, it would have been a mess. So yeah, Lake is the biggest map in the game at almost double the size of Cash. And I'm not really sure how to end this video, so it's just going to end abruptly.